this must be really safe to get in. The children mustn't see it till this evening when it's decorated. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 50. Here's a crown. Oh, no, keep the change. Oh, thank you, Mum. My skylark chirping out there. Yes, it is. Is it the squirrel rummaging about? Yes. When did the squirrel get home? Just now. Come out here, Torvald, see what I've bought. Don't disturb me. Did you say bought? Yeah. All that. Has the little spending bird been throwing money away again? Yes. But surely this year we can let ourselves go just a little bit, can't we, Torvald? It's the first Christmas we haven't had to save. You know we can't be extravagant. Oh, yes, Torvald, just a little bit, can't we? Now that you're getting a big salary, you're going to be earning lots and lots of money. Yes, in the new year, but it's going to be three whole months before my salary is due. Oh, well, we can borrow some money, tell me. Supposing I borrowed a thousand kroner today and you squandered it over Christmas, and then on New Year's Eve, a roof tile fell on my head and knocked oh, me out. Oh, don't say such horrible things. Yes, but what if such a thing did happen? What, what then? Well, if anything as dreadful as that were to happen, it would be all the same to me whether I was in debt or not. Yes, and what about the people I'd borrowed from? Them? Well, who cares about them? They're strangers, aren't they? Well, you are a typical woman. You know what I feel about this sort of thing. No debts, never borrow. We've held on bravely so far, you and I, Nora, and we will go on doing so for the short time that it is still necessary. Yes, yes, yes. As you wish, Torvald. Oh, now, now, now. The little songbird mustn't droop her wings. Mm. What? Is it the squirrel standing there, Selkin? Nora, mm? what do you think I've got here? Oh, funny! <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Good Lord, I know a lot of money goes on housekeeping Ten, at Christmas. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Torvald, this will keep me going for ages. Yes, it certainly must. Well, I'll see that it does. Now, do let me show you everything I've bought, and it was all so cheap. Look, new clothes for Ivor, and a little sword, and then a horse, and a trumpet for Bob. And a doll and doll's cot for Emmy. Look, I mean, it's only cheap, but she'll soon smash them to pieces anyway. And then some headscarves and dress material for the maids, but old Anna Maria really should have had something better. What's in that parcel? Oh, no, 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 not to see that till this evening. Oh, well, well, tell me, my little spendthrift, what have you thought of yourself? Oh, no, I don't want anything. Of course you do. Well, I don't know, really. Well... Actually, Torvald. Well? Well, if you want to give me something, you could... Out with it, then. Well, you could always give me money, Torvald. No, but Only not... as much as you think you can spare, and then I can wrap the money up in some pretty gold paper and hang it on the Christmas tree. Wouldn't that be fun? What are those birds called that are always wasting money? Yes, 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 I know. Spendthrift Spend birds. birds. But do let's do as I say, Torvald, and then I'll have time to think about what I need most. Now, that's very sensible, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Indeed it is. That is, if you could really hang on to the money I give you and really spend it on something for yourself, but it goes on housekeeping and all kinds of quite useless things, and then I have to fork out again. But, Torvald, you see, you don't... It cannot be denied. My dear little one, a spending bird is sweet, but it uses up an awful lot of money. It's incredible how expensive it is for a man to keep a spending bird. Oh, shame on you. I really do save everything I can. Yes, that's true. Everything you can. Mm. But you can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if 
only you knew what expenses we squirrels and skylarks have, Torvald. You are a strange little one, just like your father. You try to get money from all over the place, and when you've got it, it just sort of slips through your fingers. You never know what you do with it. Oh, I must take you as you are. It's in the blood. Oh, yes, Papa? it is, Nora. That sort of thing is hereditary. Oh, well, I only wish I'd inherited lots of Papa's qualities. Well, I wouldn't want you to be any different from the way you are, my sweet little songbird. Strikes me that you look, what shall I say, rather furtive today. Oh, do I? <laughs> yes, you certainly do. Look me straight in the eye. Well? My sweet tooth would never have gone wild in town today. No, what makes you think that? Hasn't the sweet tooth actually slipped into the cake shop? No, Torba, I didn't I just taste you. one little sweet. No, honestly, Not I even nibbled a macaroon Torba, or two? No, honestly, no, I no, promise no, you, I'm, I'm only joking. I wouldn't dream of crossing you. No, of course not. And you've given me your word. Well, you keep your little Christmas secrets to yourself. My dear Nora, before we come out this evening, I expect. When we've lit the Christmas tree. <laughs> Don't talk about that. Did you remember to invite Dr. Rang? I'll ask him when he comes this morning. I've ordered some good wine. I can't imagine how much I'm looking forward to this evening. Oh, yes, so am I, Torvald. And won't the children love it? Oh, look like someone's coming. I'm not at what home to visitors, remember that. There's a lady to see you, ma'am. I don't know... Well, uh, show, show her in. <laughs> Oh, the doctor came at the same time. He goes straight into my study. Yes, he did. Good afternoon, Nora. Good afternoon. I don't think you recognise me. Christina? Is it really you? Yes, it's, it's oh, me. Oh, <laughs> Christina! Fancy me not recognising you. Well, you've really changed, Christina. Yes, I suppose I have. Nine, ten years, it's... God, a... Is it as long as that since we saw each other? Yes, it is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, have you come into town, or...? I came on the steamer this morning. Well, yes, do take your things off. Um, uh, Helena. Um, there. Aren't you frozen? <laughs> Yes, we'll sit down by the stove and get comfortable. No, 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 you take the armchair. I'll have the rocking chair. There! <laughs> now you look like your old self again. It was just when I first saw you. But you are a little bit paler, Christina. And a little bit thinner, perhaps. And much, much older, Nora. Oh, well... A little bit older, perhaps, but not much at all. Oh, goodness. Oh, how thoughtless of me chattering away like this. Oh, dear sweet Christina, can you forgive me? What do you mean? Well, poor Christina, you've lost your husband. Yes, three years ago. Yes. Believe me, Christina, I often thought of writing to you at the time. I, I don't know. I... I just kept putting it off, and then something always cropped up. Nora, I do understand. No, it was terrible of me. Awful, awful. You poor thing. What you must have been through. And it didn't leave you anything. No. And no children? No. So nothing at all, then? Not even a sense of loss. But, Christina, can that be possible? Oh, it sometimes happens, Nora. Utterly alone. How terribly sad for you. I've got three lovely children. You can't see them just now because they're out with their nanny. But tell me everything about yourself now. Um, no, no, I want to hear about you. No, you start. I won't be selfish today. I will only think about you today. I must just tell you one thing, though. What do you think? My husband's just been made manager of the savings bank. How lucky. Yes, tremendously. 
It was a very precarious living being a lawyer, you know, especially if you're not prepared to take on anything that isn't absolutely above board, which, of course, Torvald never would, and I quite agree with him about that. He starts at the bank on New Year's Day, and he's going to be earning a big salary, lots of commission. Oh, goodness. Christina, I feel so relieved and happy because it's so lovely to have plenty of money and not to have to worry, isn't it? Yes. It must be lovely to have enough, at any rate. Not just enough, but masses and masses of money. Oh, Nora, <laughs> haven't you learned any sense yet? Even in school, you were a spendthrift. Torvald says I still am. <laughs> yes, but Nora, Nora isn't as silly as you think. No, we haven't had the money for me to spend. We've both had to work. You as well? Oh, yes. Yes. Just little things, you know, like sewing and embroidery and... Uh, and one or two other things as well. You know, Torvald's had to take on all sorts of extra jobs. The first year of our marriage, he overdid things terribly. He worked all hours of the day and night, but he wasn't up to it, and he became dangerously ill. The doctor said it was essential for him to go south. You spent a whole year in Italy, didn't you? It wasn't easy to get away, I can tell you, because I just had Ivor, and we had to go, of course. And it was a lovely trip, absolutely wonderful, and it saved Torvald's life. But it cost a great deal of money, Christina. Well, times like that, you're lucky to have it. Well, we got it from Papa, you see. Oh, I see. And your husband came back cured? Yes, fit as a fiddle. But the doctor? What do you mean? I thought the maid said the man who arrived with me was the doctor. Oh, no! No, <laughs> no that's Dr Rank. No, he's not here on a professional visit. No, he's our closest friend. He looks in at least uh, once a day. Mm. Torvald hasn't had a day's illness since. And the children are fit and healthy, and so am I. <laughs> Oh, goodness, Christina. Isn't it wonderful to be alive and happy? Oh, no. Oh, it is beastly of me. All I'm doing is talking about myself. Oh, you mustn't be angry with me. Uh, tell me now, um, is it really true that you didn't love your husband? Why did you marry him then? My mother was bedridden and helpless. I had my two young brothers to look after. I didn't feel it would be right to refuse his offer. No, no, you were probably right about that, yes. So he was rich at the time then, was he? He was quite well off, I thought. But his business wasn't doing well. When he died, it all went to pieces. There was nothing left. So, so then... Then I ran a little shop for a while. Oh. Had a little school. <laughs> Anything I could think of. These last three years, I've never stopped working. But now it's over, Nora. My poor mother doesn't need me anymore. She's dead. Nor do my brothers. They've got jobs and can look after themselves. Oh, you must feel greatly relieved. No. Just unutterably empty. If only I could have the luck to find a job. Some kind of office work. Oh, but Christina, that's so terribly tiring. And you look tired out as it is. Now, the best thing for you will be a little holiday. Go to a spa somewhere. I don't have a papa to pay for it, Nora. Oh, look, you mustn't be angry with no, me. I, I, I'm I... sorry. Don't you be angry with me. The worst thing about being in a situation like mine is it makes you bitter. Well, you've no one to live for, so you get to be selfish. Can you believe it? When you told me about your good fortune, I wasn't happy nearly so much for your sake as I was for my own. What do you mean? Oh, I see. Oh, you think that Dorval might be able to do something for you? Yes, that's what oh. I was thinking. Well, I'll see that he does. Leave it to me. I'll bring it up very, very delicately. I'll put him in a really good mood. Oh, Christina, I'd so like to help you. It's lovely of you, Nora, to want to help. It's especially lovely of you when you've known so little of life's troubles or hardships. You really oughtn't to say that in such a superior way. I, 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 You're just I, I, like all the others. You all think... You all think I am incapable of anything really serious. Oh, no. That I've never I... had a struggle in this difficult world. You rather look down on me, Christina, don't you? But you shouldn't, you know. I've got something to be pleased and proud about, too. I haven't told you about my really big thing. What do you mean? <laughs> Shh. Look, Torv mustn't overhear us, not at any price. No one must find out about it, Christina. Nobody but you. I 
have saved Torvald's life. How? You know, I told you about the trip to Italy and that Torvald would never have survived if we hadn't got down there. Your father gave you the money. Yes, that's what Torvald thinks and everybody else. But Papa didn't give us a penny. I got hold of the money. 4,800 kroner. What do you think of that? Where did you get it from? Mm -hmm. Mm, -la 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 you certainly couldn't borrow it. Oh, why not? A wife can't borrow without her husband's permission. Ah, oh, well, you see, if it's a wife with a little business sense. A wife who knows how to use her head a little bit. Nora. Anyway, I didn't say I did borrow the money. I might have got it from some admirer or other. Your mother. <laughs> You're dying of curiosity now, aren't you, Christina? Nora, listen. <laughs> you haven't done anything rash, have you? Is it rash to save your husband's life? It's rash if you borrowed money without him knowing. No, he hadn't to know. That was the whole point. He wasn't even supposed to know how dangerously ill he was. But didn't your father tell your husband that the money didn't come from him? No, because Papa died at about that time, I'm sorry to say. And did you never tell him? No, how can you think of it? He's so strict about things like that. And besides, Torvald and his masculine pride, you know, it would be very embarrassing for him, humiliating, really, to know that he owed anything to me. No, it would damage our relationship. This lovely, happy home of ours would never be the same again. Will you never tell him? Someday, perhaps. Many years from now, when he's not as taken with me as he is at the moment, when he no longer gets any pleasure out of watching me dance for him and dress up and recite. And... Might be useful then to have something up my sleeve. No, that time will never come. Well, Christina, what have you got to say to my big secret? Aren't I capable of something? Well, anyway, the whole business has been a great deal of worry to me, I can tell you. It hasn't been at all easy for me to meet my obligations on time. In the business world, you see, there are these things called instalments and there is something else called quarterly interest and they're sometimes very hard to come by. I've had to save a little bit here, a little bit there, wherever I could, you see. I couldn't take too much out of the housekeeping because Torvald had to live well and I can't have the children looking shabby, little sweethearts. But whenever Torvald gave me money for dresses and things, I only ever spent half. Luckily, even cheap things suit me pretty well, so Torvald never noticed. I found some other ways of earning money as well. Last winter, I was lucky enough to get a lot of copying to do, and so I shut myself away every night, and I sat writing till late into the night. I used to get so tired, so tired. But at the same time, it was tremendous fun sitting there, writing and earning money. It was almost like being a man. How much have you managed to pay off? Well... I can't tell exactly. You see, it's very difficult to keep track of with a business like this. All I do know is that I've paid off every penny I've been able to scrape together. Sometimes I haven't known where to turn. And then I used to imagine that this rich gentleman had fallen in love with me. What um, gentleman? No, no, wait. And that now he died. And when they opened his will, it said in enormous letters, all my money is to go to the charming Mrs. Nora Helmer immediately in cash. Nora, who's this man? There <laughs> wasn't any old gentleman. Good heavens, don't you understand? He was just somebody I used to dream about over and over again when I couldn't find any way of paying back the money. Oh, but it doesn't matter now. The boring old thing can keep out of it now. I've finished with him and his will because I haven't got a care in the world. Oh, Christina, what a lovely thought. <laughs> We have not a care in the world. They have everything just as Torvald likes it. And the spring will be here soon. Oh, that stretch of blue air everywhere. Maybe I shall see the sea again. Oh, yes, it is wonderful to be alive and happy. Isn't... Perhaps I'd better go. Oh, no, do stay. I don't suppose it's for me. It's probably someone for Torvald. Excuse me, ma'am. There's a gentleman wanting to speak to Mr. Helmer, but but I didn't know as as the doctor was. Well, who is he? It's me, Mrs. Helmer. You. What is it? What do you want to speak to my husband about? Bank business, in a way. I have a position at the bank. 
And now I hear that your husband's to be our new manager. So, so it, it's... It's just dull business, Mrs. Halmer, nothing else. Well, uh, yes, by, by all means, do go into the study, please. Uh. Nora, who was that man? Oh, it's a, uh, it's a uh, Mr. Krogstad. He's a lawyer. So it really was him. Do you know the man? I used to know him years ago. He was a clerk in a solicitor's office in our district for a while. Yes, yes, he was. How he's changed? Well, he was very unhappily married, I believe. He's a widower now, is he? Yes, with lots of children. There. Burning better now. He does all kinds of business, they say. Do they? I don't know. It's possible. Don't let's talk about business. It's so dull. Hello, Torval. I don't want to disturb you. I'll just pin on your wife for a moment instead. Oh, excuse me. I'm disturbing you here, too. No, no, not at all. Dr. Rank. Mrs. Linda. Ah, that's a name that's often heard in this house. I believe I passed you on the stairs as I was coming up. Yes, I go up them very slowly. I can't cope very well. Bit of trouble somewhere? More overdoing it, really. Is that all? So I suppose you've come to town to have a good rest at all the parties. Mm. I've come here to look for work. Is that supposed to be an effective remedy for overdoing it? One has to live, Doctor. Yes, that does seem to be the general opinion. Oh, come on, Dr. Rank, you certainly want to live. Yes, I certainly do. Despite my wretched condition, I still want to prolong the agony. It's the same with all my patients. <laughs> and it's the same with those who are infected morally. Now, as a matter of fact, there's a severe case of moral infection talking to Helmer at this very moment. Oh, who's that? A fellow called Krogstar, you wouldn't know him. He's rotten to the core, Mrs. Helmer, but even he began starting about how he had to live, as if that was of the utmost importance. Oh, so what did he want to talk to Torvald about? I've really no idea. I just heard it was something about the bank. I didn't know that Krog... that, um, this Mr. Krogstar had anything to do with the bank. Oh, yes, he has some sort of position down there. I don't know whether it's the same in your part of the world, but up here, people rush about sniffing out moral infection, and when they find it, they, they put the diseased person in a good job somewhere so they can keep them under observation. Though the really healthy people have to put up with being left outside in the cold. I'd have thought it was the sick who most need bringing in. Well, there you are, you see. It's that sort of thinking that's turning society into a hospital. <laughs> now, why are you laughing at that? Do you actually know what society is? I care for your boring old society. You know, I was laughing about something completely different. <laughs> Tell me, Dr. Rank, so all the people who work at the bank will be dependent on Torvald now, won't they? Is that what you find so frightfully funny? <laughs> never you mind, never you mind. Yes, I do find it enormously amusing to think that we've... Well, that Torvald has got so much power over so many people now. What about a little macaroon, Dr. Rank? Macaroons? I thought they were forbidden in this house. But these are some that Christina brought me. Aye, but, but I... No, 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 don't be alarmed. You want to know that Torvald had forbidden them? He's afraid I'll spoil my teeth, you see. But once in a while. Don't you agree, Dr. Ryan? There you are. <laughs> and one for you too, Christina. And I'm going to have one as well. Just a tiny one. There's just one thing left in the whole world that I've got this enormous desire to do. What is it? Somebody I've got an enormous desire to say in front of the door. Well, why don't you say it? You can't. It's very bad. Bad. Oh, well, in that case, it wouldn't be advisable, but you can say it in front of us. Now, what is it you have this enormous desire to say in front of Torvald? Hellfire and damnation! You must be mad. Laura! Well, say it! There he is! Hellfire and damnation! Hellfire and damnation! Hellfire and damnation! Hellfire and damnation! Hellfire and damnation. So, Torvald, dear. You managed to get rid of him. Yes. Let me introduce Christina, who's just arrived in town. Christina, um, I'm sorry, but I don't know. Mrs. Linda, Torvald, dear. Mrs. Christina Linda. Oh, yes. Childhood friend of my wife's, I presume. <clears throat> yes, we used to know each other very yes. well. Just imagine, she's come all this way just to have a word with you. What does that mean? Well, not, not exactly. She, um, she's awfully clever, Christina, at office work, and she wants to work under a really able man. 
because she wants to learn even more than she knows already. Very sensible, Mrs. Lee. And so when she heard that you'd been made bank manager, because, uh, you know, she read it in the papers, she came down here as fast as she could. You will be able to do something for Christina Torvald, dear, for my sake, won't you? That's not altogether impossible. I presume you're a widow, Mrs. Linda? Yes. And you have some experience of office work? Yes, indeed. It's very likely I can get you a job. Oh! <laughs> You've come to a fortunate moment, Mrs. Linda. Oh, I can't tell you how grateful I am. No need. But you'll excuse me for today. Mm. Wait a moment. I'll come with you. Don't stay out long, Torvald, dear. An hour, no more. Are you leaving too, Christina? Yes, I must go and look for a room. Perhaps we can walk down the street together. What a nuisance it was so short of space here, but I'm afraid it just isn't possible. Don't even think about it. Oh, here they are! Here they are! Come on, Mrs. Linda, the place now becomes unbearable for anybody but mothers. Tell this evening. Oh, darling, it's very cold. In you come, in you come. Oh, there we are. Ah. Have you been having a lovely time? Oh. Did you see the big dog? Did you? Did he bark? Did he bark at you? Oh, are you from? Oh, go and get some coffee. The someone wants to You must be frozen, Anna Marie. Thank you, ma'am. Don't touch the puzzle. What's in them? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? You'll find out this evening. Now, should we play a game? Yeah. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. Okay. Who's going to hide first? You. Who's going to hide you? No. <laughs> One, you count the ten. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not? Excuse me, the door was open. Someone must have forgotten to shut it. My husband is not at home, Mr. Krogstad. Yes, I know that. Oh, well, so, so what do you want here then? A word with you. Off you go, go and find Anna Maria. This man won't hurt you, will he? No, he won't hurt me, darling. As soon as he's gone, we'll have another game. Off you go, go and find Anna Maria. You want to speak to me? Yes, I do. Well, why today? It's not the first of the month yet. No, it's Christmas Eve. What kind of Christmas you have, well, that's entirely up to you. What is it you want? Today, I can't possibly get any more money. Well, we won't talk about that just now. This is something else. You do have a moment, I assume? Well, uh, yes, I, I suppose so, but... M m no, I, I was sitting in Olsen's cafe and I saw your husband go down the street. Yes? With a lady. Well? Was that lady Mrs. Linda? Yes. Newly arrived in town? Yes, today. Was she a good friend of yours? Yes, but I don't really see why... I knew her myself, once. I know. Oh. So you know about that, do you? I thought as much. Well, I may as well come straight to the point. Is Mrs. Linda going to be employed at the bank? How dare you cross-examine me, Mr. Krogstar? You're one of my husband's subordinates. But since you ask, I'll tell you, yes, Mrs. Linda is to have a job at the bank, and it was I who recommended her, so now you know. So my conclusion was right. Oh, well, one has a little bit of influence, I suppose. Just because one is a woman, and when one is in a subordinate position, Mr. Krogstad, one should be very, very careful not to offend people who, um... Have influence? Exactly. Mrs. Helmer, would you be so kind as to use your influence on my behalf? What does that mean? Will you have the kindness to see that I keep my subordinate position at the bank? Well, what does that mean? Who's thinking of taking it away from me? Oh, you needn't play the innocent with me. I can see that it wouldn't be very pleasant for this friend of yours to be exposed to contact with me. And now I know who I have to thank for being hounded out. Oh, no, I assure yes, you it's yes, got Yes, 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 look, there's still time. 
I advise you to use your influence to prevent it. But Mr. Crowe said I have no such influence at all. Well, haven't you? I thought just now you said no, you No, no, I didn't mean it like that. No, what makes you think I have any such influence with my husband? I've known your husband since our student days. I don't suppose His Highness the Banker is any less susceptible than other husbands. If you speak disrespectfully about my husband, I'll show you the door. The lady's brave. Well, I'm not afraid of you any longer. After New Year, I'll soon be finished with the whole business. Listen to me, Mrs. Homer. If it becomes necessary, I mean to fight to keep my modest position at the bank as if I were fighting for my life. So it seems, yes. It's not just the money. That matters least of all to me. It's something else. Well, I may as well out with it. I dare say you know, along with everyone else, that once, many years ago, I was guilty of an indiscretion. Well, I think I did hear something of the kind, The yes. matter never came to court. But immediately, every path seemed blocked to me. So I turned to the business you know about. Well, I had to do something. And I dare say I've not been one of the worst. But now I've got to get out of it all. My sons are growing up. For their sake, I've got to regain as much respectability as possible. This job at the bank was like the first small step up the ladder for me. When now your husband wants to kick me down, back into the mud again. For God's sake, Mr. Crowstard, I don't have any power at all. Because you haven't the will to do so. But I have the means to force you. You won't tell my husband that I owe you money, surely. Supposing I did. If you did. This secret is my joy and my pride. And if my husband got to know about it in such a horrible, clumsy way and got to know from you, you'll cause me the most terrible trouble. Only trouble? <sighs> well, do it, then. It'll be the worst for you, because then my husband will see what a wicked person you really are, and then you certainly won't keep your job. I asked you if that's all you're afraid of, only a little domestic trouble. And anyway, if my husband does find out about it, naturally he'll pay off what's owing straight away, and then we'll have nothing more to do with you. Listen to me, Mrs. Helmer. I think I'd better put you more fully in the picture. What do you mean? When your husband was ill, you came to me to borrow 4,800 kroner. Oh, yes, I had no one else to turn to. And I to. promised to get you that money. Yes, and you did. I promised to get you that money under certain conditions. Now, at the time, you were so concerned about your husband's illness and so anxious to get the money to travel that I don't think you paid all attention to all the details of the conditions. So it would not be out of place for me to remind you. I promised to get you that money against an IOU, which I drew up. And which I signed. Quite so. Mm. But I added a few lines to the bottom of the page, naming your father as security. He was to sign them. Was to? Well, he did sign. I left the date blank. In other words, your father was to add this data when he signed the paper. Does the lady remember this? Yes, I, I, th I think I... I then do, gave yes. you the IOU to send to your father. Wasn't that so? Mm -hmm. Which, of course, you did, because only five or six days later you brought it back to me, duly signed, and you received the money. Yes, and I've paid you regularly ever since. Yes, yes, I? more so or what? less, but let's get back to what we're talking about. It was a very difficult time for them, Mrs. Hummer, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Your father was seriously ill. He was dying. Yes, and died soon afterwards. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Hummer, do you happen to remember the day on which your father died? The exact date, I mean. Yes, Papa died on the 29th of September. Yes, that's right. I confirm that for myself. So there's something strange here, which I simply can't explain. What do you mean, something strange? Well, the strange thing is, Mrs. Helmer, that your father signed this document three days after his death. I don't understand. Well, your father died on the 29th of September. Mm -hmm. well, look here. He dated his signature the 2nd of October. Isn't that strange? Can you explain that? It's also rather striking that the words 2nd of October and the year are not in your father's handwriting, but in a hand I seem to recognize. Well, perhaps that can be explained. Perhaps your father forgot to date his signature and someone or other made a guess at it later. There's no harm in that. See, 
What matters is the signature. And that's genuine, isn't it, Mrs. Hummer? It really was your father who wrote his name here. No, it wasn't. I signed Papa's name. Mrs. Helmer, that is a very dangerous admission. Why? You'll soon have all your money. May I ask you a question? Why didn't you send this document to your father? It was impossible. Papa was ill, as I told you. If I'd asked him for his signature, he'd have wanted to know what the money was for. And how could I tell him when he was so ill that my husband's life was in danger? It was impossible. Well, surely it would then have been better for you to have cancelled the trip abroad. No, it was impossible. The trip was to save my husband's life, as I told you. We could not go. But didn't it even occur to you that you were defrauding me? I couldn't care about that in the least. I couldn't bear you. You were so cold the way you created all those difficulties, even when you knew how ill my husband was. Listen to me, Mrs. Helmer. It is clear that you haven't the faintest idea what it is you're actually guilty of. But let me tell you, the offence that I once committed was no worse and no more than that. And it destroyed my entire reputation. Oh, you? Are you trying to tell me that you might have done something brave to save your wife's life? The law's not concerned with motives. Then the law must be very bad. Bad or not, if I produce this document in court, you will be judged according to that law. I simply don't believe that. Doesn't a daughter have the right to protect her old dying father from worry and anxiety? Doesn't a wife have the right to save her husband's life? Well, I may not know very much about the law, but I'm sure that somewhere it says that that's allowed. You mean to say you're a lawyer and you don't know that? You must be a very bad lawyer, Mr. Crowstar. Perhaps so. But in matters of business, such business as you and I have together, you must surely believe I do know something about that, don't you? Good. Now you do as you like. But let me tell you this much. If I'm to be cast out of society a second time, you will keep me company. Nonsense. He's trying to frighten me. I'm not so naive. Where shall I put it, ma'am? Oh, um, put, put it on the table in there. All right. Shall I get anything else? Uh, no, no, thank you. I have everything I need. Has anyone been here? Uh, here, no. Strange. I just saw Krogstar leave the building. Oh, yes, yes, that's true. Krogstar was here for a moment. Nora, I can see it in your face. He's been here and asked you to put in a good word for him. Yes. And you were going uh, to pretend that it was your own idea? You weren't going to tell me that he'd been here. Didn't he ask that as well? Yes, Torvald, but I... Nora, uh, I, how can you let yourself get involved in that? Converse with a person like that, promise him something, and then on top of everything, tell me a lie. A lie? Don't you say that nobody had been here? Oh, mm. well, 
little songbird must never do that again. A songbird must keep its beak clean, never a false note. Isn't that how it should be? Oh, yes, I knew all right. I'd say no more about it. Hmm. Nice and warm in here. Torvald. Yes? I'm enormously looking forward to the fancy dress party the day after tomorrow. And I'm enormously curious to see what you're going to surprise me with. Oh, no. It's a silly idea, really. Oh? No. I just can't think of anything that'll do. You know, everything seems so ridiculous, so pointless. Has my little Nora come to realise that at last? Are you very busy, Torvald? <sighs> what are all those papers? bank business. Oh, already. I've had the retiring management give me the authorization to undertake the necessary changes in staff and organization. I want the whole thing in order by New Year. So that's why Paul Croke started mm. kicking. Mm. Because if you hadn't been so busy, I'd have asked you to do me an enormous favor. Well, what is it? Let me hear it. Well, you see, no one's got such good taste as you. And I'd so like to look my best at the fancy dress party. <laughs> Please, won't you take care of things and help me decide? And tell me what time to be and what my costume should be like. So my willful little girl is looking for someone to come to her rescue. Mm, I just can't get anywhere without your help. Good. Good. I'll think about it. We'll find something, I'm oh. sure. Thank you, that is kind of you. Aren't those red flowers pretty? Torvald, tell me, was it so very wrong what this croak star did? He forged signatures. You any idea what that means? Well, mightn't he have done it out of necessity? Yes. Or well, like so many other people without thinking. Hmm. I'm not so heartless as to condemn a man absolutely for one single action like that. No, you're not, are you, Tom? Only a man can redeem himself morally if he openly confesses his crime and takes his punishment. Punishment? It's not the path Krogstad took. He got through by tricks and deception. It is that that has broken him morally. Do you think it would? Well, just think. How a person with that sort of thing on his conscience has to lie and dissemble and play the hypocrite at every turn. Even with his own wife. And his own children. The children, that's the most terrible part of all, Nora. Why? Because if you are encircled by stinking lies, it brings infection and the stuff of disease into the whole life of a home. Every breath the children draw in a house like that is filled with the germs of something ugly. You sure? My dear little Nora, I've seen it often enough as a lawyer. Nearly all the people who have become corrupted early in life have had mothers who were liars. Why especially mothers? usually comes from the mothers. Fathers can have a similar effect, of course. Every lawyer knows that perfectly well. And yet, year after year, in his own home, this Krogstar has been poisoning his own children with lies and deceit. That is why I call him morally corrupt. And that is why you, my sweet little Nora, must promise not to speak on his behalf again. Give me your hand on it. No, no, what is it? Give me your hand. There. It's settled then. I assure you it would have been impossible for me to work with him. I feel literally physically sick in the presence of people like that. So hot in here. Got so much to do. 
I better think about getting a bit of work done before dinner. I'll think about your costume as well. And I might just have something ready to wrap up in gold paper and hang on the Christmas tree. Bless you, my little songbird. Children are asking so nicely to be allowed to come to Mama. Don't let them in here with me. <laughs> you stay with them for a bit, Anna Maria. Yes, ma'am. Corrupt my little children. Poison the home. It's not true. Couldn't possibly be true. Last. The dressing up box. Oh, yes. Put it on the table, will you? But they're all in a terrible mess, I'm afraid. Oh, I wish I could tear them up into a hundred thousand pieces. Well, they could easily be mended with a bit of patience. Yes, I think, um, I'll go and get Mrs. Linda to help me. Going out again in this awful weather. You'll catch cold and make yourself ill, Miss Nora. Oh, worse things can happen, Anna Marie. How are the children? The poor little things are playing with their Christmas presents. But they keep asking for me. They're so used to having their mama with them. I know, but I... I won't be able to be with them quite so much from now on, Anna Maria. Oh, well. Little children get used to anything. Do you think so? Do you think they'd forget their mama if she wasn't here at all? Good gracious, wasn't here at all. Anna Maria, I've often wondered, how could you bear to let your baby be adopted by strangers? Well, I had to, when I was going to be little Nora's nanny. Yes, I know, but did you want to? When I had the chance of such a good place, a poor girl that's got into trouble has to take what she can get, because that wicked man didn't do a thing for me. Yes, but your daughter seems to have forgotten you. Oh, no, she certainly hasn't. She wrote to me when she was confirmed, and again when she got married. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Dear old Anna <laughs> You were such a good mother to me when I was little. Poor little Nora. I was the only mother you had. <laughs> yes. And I know that if the children didn't have any other... What am I saying? Oh, could you go into the now? I've, I've, I've got, I've got to. Um... <sighs> Tomorrow you'll see how lovely I look. Oh, I know there won't be anyone at the ball as lovely as Mrs. Nora Helmer. <laughs> oh, if only I dared go out. As long as nobody came. Up there, is there? Oh, I'm so glad you've come. I heard you've been up asking for me. <laughs> yes, yes, I was just passing. There's something that you really must help me with. Let's sit down on the sofa. Um. 
there's going to be a fancy dress party at the Stenborgs upstairs uh, tomorrow night, and and Torvald wants me to go as a Neapolitan fisher girl, dance at Tarantella, because I learned it in Capri, you see. <laughs> You'll be giving a performance. Oh, yes, yes, well, Torvald says I must. But, um, you see, look, here's my costume, and, oh, it's got all torn, I don't know. I just don't know how to mend it, or... Oh, we can simply put that right. That's just the trimming come loose a bit here and there. Oh, thank you, that's so kind. Needle and thread? Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you for a lovely evening yesterday. Oh, I didn't think it was as lovely as it usually is. Tell me, is Dr Rank always as depressed as he was yesterday? Uh, no, no. No, it was particularly noticeable yesterday. He actually suffers from a very serious illness. It's wasting away his spine, poor thing. You see, his father was a horrible man who had mistresses and, and so on, and so Dr Rank had been delicate since he was a child. Does he come here every day? Mm, yes, every single day. He's been Torvald's best friend since they were young, and he's my friend too. Is he quite sincere? I mean, doesn't he rather like saying things to please people? No, quite the opposite. What makes you think that? Well, yesterday, when you introduced me to him, he said he'd often heard my name mentioned in this house. Later, I noticed your husband had no idea who I was. So how could oh, Dr. Oh, Rank... I see. No, no, that's quite right. Christina, you see, the, the thing is... Torvald is so indescribably fond of me. He wants to keep me all to himself, so he says. You know, in the early days, he used to get sort of jealous if I so much as mentioned any of the people I'd been fond of back at home. So I stopped doing it, naturally. But with Dr. Rank, I can talk about things like that because he likes hearing about them, you see. Listen, Nora, you ought to get out of this thing with Dr. Rank. What ought I to get out of? Lots of things, I think. Yesterday, you told me about some man who was going to leave you his money. Yes, who doesn't exist, I'm sorry to say, but why? Has Dr. Rank got money? Yes, he has, yes. And no one dependent on him? No, no one. And he comes here every day? Well, yes, I told you he did. <laughs> How can a man in his position be so insistent? You don't understand what you're getting at. Do you think I don't know who you borrowed all that money from? Are you out of your mind? A friend of ours who comes here every single day. Can you imagine what a terribly embarrassing situation that would be? It really wasn't him. No, I assure you. No, I'm quite, I'm quite sure if I did ask him, but... But you won't, of course. No, no. Can't imagine having to. Though, though, I'm sure if I did ask him... Behind your husband's back. Oh, you say, I've got to get out of this other thing, and that's behind his back as well. I have got to get out of it. Yes, I said and that to you man yesterday. Man can handle these things so much better than a woman. Her own husband can, yes. Christina, when you've paid off everything you owe, you do get your IOU back, don't you? Yes, of course. And then you can tear it up and burn it, the filthy rotten bit of paper. Something's happened to you since yesterday. Nora, what is it? Christina, I... Oh, no. Oh, look. Here's Torvald back again. Could you go in and sit in with the children for a while, please? Please, he can't stand the sight of people sewing. Quickly. Um, get Anna Maria to help you. Oh, Torvald, dear, I've been longing for you to come back. Is that the dressmaker? Uh, no, that was Christina. Um, she's helping me mend my costume. Oh, you've no idea how lovely I'm going to look. It was a good idea of mine, wasn't it? Oh, splendid. And aren't I good, too, to let you have your way? Good. To let your husband have his way. Well, no, no, I, I know you didn't mean it like that. But I don't want to interrupt you. I suppose you want to try it on. Yes, I suppose you're going to work. Okay. Yes. I've been down to the bank. Torvald! Yes? If your squirrel were to ask you really, really nicely to do something... Well? Would you do it? I have to know what it is first, of course. The squirrel would stumble about. Do all sorts of tricks. Out with it, then. The skylark would sing in every room in the house. Come on, the skylark does that anyway. I'll be an elf. I'll dance in the moonlight for you, Trova. Nora. It's surely not what you started on this morning. Yes, I implore you, Trova. But you really Torvald. have the gall to bring that up again? Yes, 
Yes, you must let me have my way. You must let Crookside keep his job at the bank. My dear Nora, it's his place I've decided to give to Mrs. Linda. Yes, I know, and it's enormously kind of you, but you can just dismiss some other clerk instead of Crookside. This is incredible willfulness. Just because you go and make some thoughtless promise to put in a good word for him, you no, expect me... No, no, it's not that, Tovel, Tovel, it's not that. It's for your own sake. The man writes in the most horrible newspapers. You've said so yourself. He could do you unspeakable harm. He frightens me to death. I understand. Is it old memories that are frightening you? What? But what do you mean? You're thinking of your father, naturally. Yes, do you remember what malicious people wrote in the papers about Papa? How they slandered him so terribly. I think, you know, they'd have got him dismissed if the Ministry hadn't sent you there to investigate if you hadn't been so kind and My helpful. dear Nora, there is a considerable difference between your father and me. Your father did not hold a position that demanded he was unimpeachable, but I do. And I intend to remain that way for as long as I hold my post. But, yeah, but no one knows what evil people can come up with. You see, we could live so peacefully, happily, you and I and the children, the peace and quiet of our own home without a care in the world. That's why I implore you... But it is precisely by pleading for him that you make it impossible for me to keep him. It is already known at the bank that I intend to dismiss Krogstad. If the rumour got round that the new bank manager had let his wife change his mind... Well, what if it did? Oh! Of course. Now, as long as the obstinate little thing gets her own way, I should go and make myself look ridiculous in front of the whole staff. Give people the idea that I'm not my own man. I should soon suffer the consequences of that, shouldn't I? Besides, there is one other consideration that makes it completely impossible for me to have Krogstad the bank as long as I'm manager. What's that? His moral failings I might have overlooked if absolutely necessary. Yes, you could, couldn't you, Tova? Yes, and I hear he's quite useful too. But he was an acquaintance of mine when we were young. It was one of those rash friendships that you're so often embarrassed by in later life. Well, I may as well tell you straight out. We've always called each other by our Christian names. And this tactless person makes no attempt to hide it when other people are present. On the contrary, he thinks this entitles him to adopt a familiar tone with me. So at every opportunity, he blurts out his Torvald this and his Torvald that. I find it highly embarrassing. He would make my position at the bank intolerable. You don't mean all this. Oh? Don't I? Why not? Well, no, because this is all so small-minded. What do you mean? Small-minded? Well, you think I'm small-minded? Well, no, no. On the contrary, to Of course, dear, that's you why call I, my I... motives small-minded, so I must be small-minded too. Small-minded! I see. Well, I'll show you. I'll put a stop to this. Helena! What are you going to do? Settle it. Helena, take this letter. Get hold of a messenger and get him to deliver it. Sir. Quickly. The address is on it. Wait, wait. Some money. Sir. There you are, my stubborn little madam. What was that letter? Krogstar's dismissal. Call it back. There's still time, please. Oh, Torvald, call it back for my sake, for your sake, for the sake of the children. Please listen to me, Torvald, please. Please, you don't know what this could bring upon us all. Please. Too late. Yes, it is too late. My dear Nora, I forgive you this anxiety of yours. Well, it really is an insult to me. Or isn't it an insult to think that I should be afraid of a wretched pen pusher's revenge? But I forgive you anyway, because it demonstrates so beautifully how deeply you love me. Isn't that how it should be? My own beloved Nora. Let come what will come. You can trust that in a real crisis, I will have strength and courage. You'll see that I am man enough to take everything on myself. What do you mean by that? Everything I say. No. You'll never, ever have to do that. 
good. Then we'll share things as man and wife. That's how it should be. Are you satisfied now? Now, 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 not those frightened eyes like a dove. After all, it's nothing but sheer imagination. Now you should work through your tarantella. Practice the tambourine. Stay in my study. Close these doors so you can make as much noise as you like. I won't hear a thing. And when rank comes, tell him where he can find me. Good afternoon, Dr. Rank. I always know your ring. as long as you can. Ah, does that frighten you? Well, that's rather a strange thing to say. Is anything likely to happen? Something will happen which I've been prepared for for a long time, but it's true I didn't expect it quite so soon. Dr. Rank, you must tell me. I'm getting worse. There's nothing can be done about it. Oh, it's you. Who else? In the last few days, I've been going over my internal accounts. Bankrupt. Within a month, I may be rotting in the graveyard. Oh, what a horrible way to talk. There's one single investigation left to make. When I'm finished with that, I'll know, more or less, when the rot will set in. There's something I want to say to you. Helmer is so sensitive and so disgusted by anything that's ugly, I, I don't want him in my sick room. Oh, no, Look, I won't just... have him there. Absolutely. My door will be closed to him. Oh, when I know the worst for sure, I'll send you my visiting card with a black cross on it. And then you'll know that the horror of disintegration has begun. Oh, really? You're being quite unreasonable today. So hoping you'll be in a really good mood. <sighs> with death staring at me and suffering for another man's sins, where's the justice in that? Yet in every single family, somehow or other, there's the same inexorable retribution. Oh, nonsense, really. Do cheer up. Cheer up. Well, why not? Whole thing is laughable. My poor innocent spine has to suffer for my father's wild life as a young officer. He was rather addicted to asparagus. A patty de foie gras, wasn't he? Yes. And to truffles. Oh, yes. Truffles. <laughs> and oysters, too, I believe. Oysters? Yes, of course. <laughs> oysters. And then all that port and champagne he drank with them. It's a shame that all these delicious things should attack the bones. Especially when they attack an unfortunate string of bones that never got any fun out of them. Oh, yes. Thing of all. 
Why did you smile, Doctor? No, it was you that laughed. No, it was you that smiled. I think you <laughs> are a bigger tease than I thought. <laughs> I'm in such a crazy mood today. So it seems. Dr. Rank, please, don't die and leave Torvald and me. You'll get over it. When you're dead, you're soon forgotten. Do you think so? People make new relationships. Who makes new relationships? You and Helma, you both will when I'm gone. You've made a pretty good start already, it seems to me. What was that Mrs. Linda doing here last night? Oh, you're surely not jealous of poor Christina, Yes, I am. That woman will take my place in this house. When I am no longer able to come, perhaps that woman will. Shh, she's in there. Well, there you are, you see? Well, she's only... Today as well. Just doing my costume. Goodness gracious, you are being unreasonable. Behave yourself, Dr. Wright. Tomorrow you'll see how beautifully I'll dance. You can pretend I'm doing it all for you. And Torvald too, of course. That goes without saying. Now come and sit over here and I'll show you something. What is it? Look here. Colours. Aren't they lovely? Of course, it's rather dark in here now, but tomorrow night. No, 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 no. You can only see the foot. Well, perhaps you can see a little higher up as well. Why are you looking so critical? Don't you think they'll fit? I couldn't possibly have an informed opinion about that. Shame on you. Take that. What other delights am I to be allowed to see? You're not going to see another morsel. Because you're naughty. When I sit here quite so intimately with you like this, I can't grasp, I can't imagine what would have become of me if I'd never come to this house. Yes, I think you actually enjoy being here with us. To think of having to leave it all behind. No nonsense, you're not going to leave it. Hardly been missed for a moment. What if I were to ask you? F no. What? For a great token of your friendship. Yes. Yes. No, I mean an enormously great favour. Would you for once make me so happy? Well, you don't know what it is yet. Well, then, tell me. Oh, no, I can't, Dr. Rank. It's much too much to ask. It's both advice and help and a favour. All the better. I can't imagine what it is, so tell me. Can't you confide in me? Oh, yes, I can. You're my best, most faithful friend, so I will tell you. Dr. Rank, there's something you must help me to prevent. You know how much, how indescribably much Torval loves me. He wouldn't hesitate for a moment to sacrifice his life for me. Oh, Nora. Uh, I think he's the only one who who would gladly sacrifice his life for you. Oh, I see. I swore that you would know before I died. I'd never have a better opportunity. So, Nora, now you know. And now you know, too, that you can't confide in me more than anyone else. Let me pass, please. Nora. Helena? 
Will you bring the lamp in, please? Oh dear, Dr. Ranga, that was really very bad of you. To have loved you as deeply as anyone else, was that bad? No, but to go and tell me so. There really wasn't any need. How do you mean? Did you know? Laura, <clears throat> Mrs. Helmer, I asked you, did you know? Oh, how do I know what I've known or not known? I really can't tell you. Would you be so clumsy? Everything was so right. I'm at your disposal, body and soul. I beg you, tell me what it is you want. There's nothing I can ask you for now. Yes, you can. Please don't punish me like this. Let me do for you whatever is humanly possible. There's nothing you can do for me now. Anyway, you probably don't need your help. It's probably just all my imagination. <laughs> You'll see. Yes. That's it, of course. <laughs> well, Dr. Rank, you really are a fine one. Don't you think you ought to be ashamed of yourself? Now the lamps come in. No, not really. Perhaps I ought to go for good. No, you certainly mustn't do anything of the sort. You know very well that Torvald couldn't do without you. What about you? Oh, I always think it's tremendous fun here when you come. Well, that's what led me astray. You're a complete mystery to me. Sometimes I feel you'd rather be with me than with Helmer. You see, there are people that one is most fond of, and then there are others that one would almost rather be with. <laughs> well, there's something in that. You see, when I lived at home with Papa, it was him I was most fond of, naturally, but I always thought it was tremendous fun to steal down to the maid's room because they didn't keep telling me what to do and they always talked to each other about such amusing things. Oh, I see. It's their place I've taken. Oh, dear, kind Dr. Rank. No, that isn't what I meant at all. But you can see, can't you, that it's sort of the same thing with Torvald as with Papa. Excuse me, ma'am, but... Let's check the kitchen, Mrs. to speak to you. Oh, um... Is there anything wrong? Oh, no, no. Nothing at all, no. It's my costume. Um, How do you mean your costume's there? Yes, no, no, this is another one. I've, I've ordered it, but Torvald must know. Oh, uh, I see. That's the great secret. Yes, yes. So, uh, could you go into him now? He's in the inner room. Would you, would you keep him busy for a while? Don't worry. I shan't let him escape. <laughs> Is he waiting in the kitchen? But yes, he came up the back stairs. Well, didn't you tell him there was somebody here? Y yes, but it, it didn't help. What, he won't go? No, he said he won't go until he's spoken to you. Well, I'll, I'll see him, yes. I'll, I'll see him in there, though, Helena. It's a surprise for my husband, you see. You must tell anybody. Oh, yes, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Softly, my husband is at home. What if he is? What do you want from me? I want to know something. 
Well, hurry up. What is it? I suppose you know I've been dismissed. I couldn't prevent it, Mr. Croxton. I fought for you as hard as I possibly could, but it didn't help at all. Has your husband so little love for you? He knows what I can expose him to, and yet he What makes you think that he knows? No. I didn't really think he did. Wouldn't be at all like my good friend Torvald Helmer to show so much courage. Mr. Krogstad, I insist you show respect for my husband. By all means. All the respect he deserves. But since Madame is so anxious to keep this all a secret, I assume that you are better informed than you were yesterday as to what it is you've actually done. Better informed than you could ever make me. Yes, well. A bad lawyer like me. What is it that you want? I just want to see how things stand with you, Mrs. Hummer. I've been thinking about you all day. Oh, yes, even a debt collector, a pen pusher, a, well, a man like me does have what they call feelings, you know. Well, show them, then. Think of my little children. Have you or your husband ever thought of mine? No. Well, it's all the same. I just simply wanted to say that you needn't take this matter too seriously. I won't be bringing charges at present. Oh, no, you won't, will you? I knew you wouldn't. The whole thing can be settled amicably. There's absolutely no need for anyone else to know. It'll just be between the three of us. Well, no, my husband must never get to know about this. Well, how can you prevent it? Well... Perhaps you can pay the balance now. No, well, not immediately, oh, but... Ha perhaps you have some means of raising the money in the next few days. Well, not that I'm willing to make use of. Well, it wouldn't have helped you anyway. If you were to sit there with any amount of cash in your hand, you wouldn't get your IOU back from me. Well, what do you want to do with it, then? I just intend to keep it. Have it in safekeeping. Now, outside, I'd need nothing about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> so if you should be considered doing anything desperate... I am. If you should be thinking of running away from home... I am. something even worse... How do you know? ...then just you give up that idea. How do you know I was thinking of that? Most of us think of that to begin with. I thought of it myself. But I didn't have the courage. Neither have I. No, you haven't, have you? You haven't the courage either. I haven't. I haven't. Well, it would be a very foolish thing to do anyway. Once the first domestic storm blows over. I have a letter to your husband in my pocket. Telling him everything? As considerably as possible. My husband must never get that letter. Tear it up. I'll find some way of getting the money. Now listen, Mrs. Hummer, I think no, no, I've no, just no, told no. you... No, 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 I'm not talking about the money that I owe you. Tell me how much you're demanding from my husband and I'll get it. I'm not demanding money from your husband. What are you demanding, then? I'll tell you. I want to get back on my feet, Mrs. Helmer. I want to get on in the world, and your husband's going to help me. For the past 18 months, I have not been guilty of anything dishonest. All that time, I was struggling against the most difficult of circumstances. I was content to work my way up step by step. Well, now I have been thrown out again, and I will not put up with being merely forgiven. I want to get on in the world, I tell you. I want to be back in that bank and in a better job. Your husband will create a new post for me. He'll never do that. Yes, he will. I know him. He daren't object. And once I'm in there, then you'll see. Within a year, it'll be Niels Krogstad, not Torvald Helmer, that'll be managing that bank. Oh, you'll never see that happen. Oh, do you mean that you're... Yes, I've got the courage now. You don't frighten me. Fine, pampered lady like you. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. Under the ice, you mean? Down into the cold, cold black water, and then to float up again in spring. Hideous. Unrecognizable. Hairless. You don't frighten me. And you don't frighten me. People don't do that sort of thing, Mrs. Homer. <laughs> Anyway, what good would it do you? I have him where I want him. And afterwards? When I'm have no longer here... Have you forgotten that your posthumous reputation will be in my hands? Well... 
And now you've been warned. So don't do anything foolish. When Homer gets my letter, I expect a message from him. And remember this. It was your husband who forced me to take this course. That I will never forgive him. Bye, Mrs. Homer. Best for no, both of there's you. There's more to this than you know. I wrote a false name and for heaven's sake. I just want to say one thing, Christopher. You must be my witness. Witness? What am I to if I go mad, which might easily happen. Nora. Or anything else should happen to me so that I couldn't be here. You're out of your mind. And if there was someone who wanted to take all the blame onto himself. Do you know what I mean? Yes. But, but what well, I, I want to... you to be my witness that it's not true. I'm not out of my mind at all. I am perfectly sane now. And I tell you this, no one else knew anything about it. I did it all myself. Remember that. Of course I will. Oh. I don't understand a word of this. Oh, how could you understand? The most wonderful thing. Yes. The most wonderful thing. But it's so terrible. It mustn't happen. Not for anything. I'm going to go straight away and talk to Krogstad. Oh, no! Don't go to him. He won't do you harm. There was a time when he'd have done anything in the world for me. He would. Where does he live? Oh. How should I know? Oh. No. Yes. Here's his card. The letter. The letter. What, what is it? Why do you want me? Oh, Nana, don't be so frightened. We're not coming in anyway. You've locked the door. Are you still trying your costume on? Yes, I am trying it on. I'm going to look so lovely, Torvald. He, he only lives around the corner. Yes, but it's no use. There's no hope for us now. The letter's in the box. And your husband has the key? Yes, always. Well, Krogstad must demand his letter back unopened. He must make some excuse. No, but it's, this is the time when Torvald always reads well, put him off. Go into him. I'll come back as soon as I can. Yes. Torvald! So, a man may finally venture into his own sitting room again. Come on, Ren. Now we're going to be allowed to see the... What's this? What's what, Torvald, dear? Rank told me to expect a great dressing up scene. Well, that's what I understood, but I was wrong then. Oh, well, no, no one's allowed to admire me in all my finery until tomorrow. You're tired, Nora, dear. Have you been practicing too much? No, I haven't practiced at all yet. <laughs> You'll have to, will. Oh, I know I will, but I just can't get anywhere without your help. I seem to have completely forgotten it all. Oh, we'll soon brush it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Take care of me, Torvald, would you please? I'm just so nervous. All those people. You must devote yourself exclusively to me this evening. I promise. Not a stroke of business. I promise this evening I'll be completely at your oh. service, you poor helpless little thing. What are you looking for out there? I'm just going to see if there are any letters. No, don't do that, Torvald. What's the matter now? No, but please don't. I beg you, because there aren't any. Let me look, though. Ha-ha! I won't be able to dance tomorrow unless I practice with you now! Nora, are you really that nervous? Yes, I am. I'm terribly nervous. So please sit down and play for me, Torvald. Instruct me, as so you always with do. With pleasure, with great pleasure, if that's what you want. Play for me now. I'll dance for you now. Two, three, four. <laughs> Violently, Nora. 
No, no, this won't do at all. <laughs> I told you so, didn't I? Let me play for her. Yes, do that. Then I can instruct her better. You've forgotten everything I've taught you. There you are, you see. You're going to have to go on instructing me right up until the last minute. That's well, you can certainly rely on that. You mustn't think about anything but me all today and all tomorrow. You mustn't open a letter. You mustn't open oh, a letter. Oh, you're box. still afraid of that man! Well, yes, that too. No, but... I can see it in your face. There's a letter lying from him there already. I don't know. I think so. But you're not to open it, Torvald. Nothing ugly must come between us until tomorrow. When it's all over. You shouldn't argue with her. The child shall have its way. But tomorrow, after you've danced. Then you'll be free. That dinner is served, ma'am. We'll have champagne, Elena. Very good, ma'am. <laughs> well, well, a banquet, <laughs> Champagne banquet till the break of day. And some macaroni. Helena, lots and lots of them for once. Oh, now there's no need for this fear and wildness. Just be my little skylark as usual. Yes, I will, I will. But just go in now. And you too, Dr. Rick. Christina must help me put my hair straight. Gone to the country. I could see by your face. He'll be back tomorrow evening. I left him a note. You shouldn't have done that. You're not to try to prevent anything. It actually gives me joy. This waiting for the most wonderful thing to happen. What is it that you're waiting for? You wouldn't understand. Go in now, I'll be in in a minute. I found a note from you at home. What does this mean? I had to talk to you. Oh? Well, does it have to be in this house? It was impossible at my lodgings. Come up. The maid's asleep and the helmers are at a party upstairs. Well, well. So the helmers are dancing tonight, are they? Yes. Why not? True. Why not? Let's have a talk. Have you and I got anything more to talk about? We have a great deal to talk about. I didn't think we had. No, well, you never really understood me. What was there to understand? Except that you abandoned me when something better came along. Do you think it was easy for me? Well, wasn't it? 
Have you really gone on believing that? If it wasn't easy, why did you write to me the way you did? I had to break it off with you. So it was my duty to wipe out everything you felt for me. And all this, all this for the sake of money. I had a helpless mother and two young brothers to look after. We couldn't wait for you, Niels. You had no prospects then. But possibly. But you had no right to throw me over for the sake of somebody else. I don't know. I've often asked myself if I had the right. When I lost you, it was as if the ground opened up beneath my feet. Look at me now. I'm like a shipwrecked man clinging to a wreck. Rescue could be close. It was close. But then you came and got in the way. I didn't know, Niels. I only heard today it's you I'm to replace at the bank. Well, all right, but now that you do know, won't you give it up? No. It wouldn't help you in the least. Help? Help? I'd do it all the same. I've learnt to be sensible. Life and bitter necessity have taught me that. And life's taught me not to believe in empty words. Then life's taught you something sensible. You said just now you were like a shipwrecked man clinging to a wreck. I had every reason to say so. I'm like a shipwrecked woman clinging to a wreck. No one to grieve for, no one to care for. It was your own choice. Niels, what if we shipwrecked people could reach each other? What do you mean? Why do you suppose I came back to town? You were thinking of me. All my life, for as long as I can remember, I've worked. That's been my greatest, my only joy. Now I'm quite alone in the world. I feel completely empty and lost. There's no joy in working for yourself. Niels, give me something, someone to work for. I, I don't believe this. This is hysteria. It's nothing but an exaggerated desire to sacrifice yourself. Have you ever seen hysteria in me? Could you really do this? Do you know all about my past? Yes. Do you know what people think about me around here? You seem to think just now that you might have been a different man with me. Oh, I'm certain of it. Couldn't that still happen? Christina, you really mean what you say? Yes, you do. You do. I can see it in your face. You, you really have the courage. We do need each other. I believe in you, Niels. The real you. With you, I could face everything. Thank you, Christina. It's all useless. Of course, you have no idea what steps I've taken against the Helmers. Yes, Niels, I do know. And you still have the courage. I understand how far a man like you can be driven by despair. If only I could undo what I've done. Well, you could. Your letter's still in the letterbox. Are you sure? I'm quite sure. Is that what this means? You would do anything to save your friend, is that it? When you sold yourself once for the sake of others, you don't do it again. I will demand my letter back. No, no. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll wait here till Helmut comes down. I'll, I'll tell him he must give it back to me unread. It's about my dismissal. He mustn't have it. No, Niels, you mustn't ask for it back. But isn't that really why you asked me here? Well, yes, at first. I was frightened. But that was yesterday. I've seen some incredible things in this house in the last 24 hours. Helma has to be told everything. This wretched secret has to come out. Everything has to come out into the open between these two. All this deception, all this secrecy has to stop. Well, if you dare. You must go. But one thing I will do, I'll do it straight away. I'll wait for you downstairs. Yes. And walk home with me. I've never been so unbelievably happy in my life. to live for, a home to bring comfort to, 
Oh, I can really get down to that. They're coming. Please, I beg you. I implore you, Tola, just one more hour. Not another single minute. Oh, and you go. You know what we agreed. It's cold standing out there. Oh, Christina. Good evening. Why, Mrs. Linda? Here, so late. Yes, forgive me. I did so want to see Nora dressed up. Have you been sitting here waiting for me? Yes, I came too late. You'd already gone upstairs. I didn't feel I could leave until I'd seen you. Yes, have a good look at her. I think I can say she's worth looking at. Isn't she lovely, Mrs. Linda? Yes, I must say. Isn't she extraordinarily lovely? That was the general opinion at the party as well. But she's dreadfully willful, a sweet little thing. I almost had to use force to get her away. Oh, Torvald. You'll be very sorry you didn't let me stay half an hour longer. Oh, you hear that, Mrs. Linda? She dances her tarantella, has a raging success, which was well deserved, although the performance was perhaps too realistic, too natural. I mean, rather more than strictly speaking might be consistent with the requirements of art. But never mind. The main thing is, she was a success. A raging success. Would it be reasonable for me to let her stay after that? Weaken the effect? Oh, thank you. I took my lovely little Capri girl by the arm, my capricious little Capri girl, I might say, whisked her around the room, a bow to all sides, and as they say in novels, the beautiful vision vanished. An exit should always be effective, Mrs. Linda. Impossible for me to get Nora to grasp that. It's hot in here. Well, I've spoken to him. And Nora, you must tell your husband everything. I knew it. You've nothing to fear from Crockstar, but you must tell him. I'll never tell him. Then the letter will. Thank you, Christina. Now I know what I must do. Shh. Well, have you finished admiring her, Mrs. Linda? Yes. Now I'll say good night. What, so soon? Good night, Nora. Don't be willful any longer. Well said, Mrs. Lynn. Good night, Mr. Helmer. Good night. Good night. I hope you get home, all right? I'm willing. But you don't have very far to go, do you? Good night. Good night. There. We've got rid of her at last. God, she's a bore, that woman. Aren't you very tired, Torvald? Not in the least. Not sleepy either? Not at all. On the contrary, I feel extremely lively. What about you? You look tired. You're half asleep. Yes. I am very tired. I want to go straight to sleep. You see, you see, I was right not to let her stay there any longer. Oh, everything you do is right. Oh, now my little Skylark is talking like a real person. Dr. Rank was in high spirits this evening. Oh. Did you notice? Was he? No, I, I didn't get to speak to him. I hardly did either, but it's a long time since I've seen him in such a good mood. It's marvelous to be home again, all alone with you. You are a delightfully enchanting young woman. Don't look at me like that, Torvald. Can't I look at my most precious possession? At all the loveliness that's mine? All mine? Completely mine. You mustn't talk to me like that tonight, really. You've still got the tarantella in your blood, I see, and that makes you all the more enticing. This... Guests are starting to leave. Soon the whole house will be silent. Yes, I hope so. Yes, you do, don't you? My own darling Nora. Do you know why I expect when we're at a party like that. You know why I keep away from you and speak to you so little and just steal a glance at you every now and then. Do you know why? It's because I'm pretending that we're secretly in love, secretly engaged, that no one suspects there's anything between us. Yes, 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 I know your every thought is... I mean... Yes, I'm only ready to leave and I 
Wrap the shawl around your beautiful young shoulders. Around the wonderful curve of your neck. I'm pretending that you're my young bride and I'm carrying you back from the wedding. I'm bringing you into my home for the first time to be alone with you, for the first time, all alone with you, all alone with your trembling young beauty. All I've longed for the whole evening is you. When I saw you whirling so seductively in the Tarantella, oh, yeah, my blood was on fire. I couldn't endure it any longer. That's why I brought you down here so early. No, leave me so alone. Leave me alone. I don't want all this to me. You're teasing me, my little Nora. Don't want, don't want. I'm your husband, aren't I? What's that? Do you hear? Me. There I come in from the... God, what does he want now? Just a minute. kind of you not to go past that door. I thought I heard your voice, so I thought I'd just like to drop in for a moment. It's always so warm and comfortable in here with you two. Well, you certainly seem to be making yourself at home upstairs as well. Why shouldn't one get as much as one can out of this life? As much as one can, and as long as one can. Wine was excellent. Champagne, especially. Oh, you noticed that too. <laughs> didn't you? Incredible the amount I managed to swill down. <laughs> Torvald drank a lot of champagne tonight too. Did he? Yes. It always makes him so funny afterwards. Well, why shouldn't you allow yourself a jolly evening after a day well spent? Well spent. Unfortunately, I can't claim that for myself. Oh, but I can, you see. Doctor Rank. I believe you conducted a scientific investigation today. <laughs> Quite right. Well, a little Nora talking about scientific investigation. May I congratulate you on the outcome? You certainly may. It was good then? It was the best possible outcome for both doctor and patient. Certainty. Certainty. Absolute certainty. So why shouldn't I allow myself a jolly evening after that? You are quite right, too, Dr. Rank. I agree. As long as you don't suffer for it tomorrow. Well, there's a price to pay for everything in this life. Dr. Rank, you really like fancy dress parties, don't you? Yes, when yes. there are plenty of amusing costumes. <laughs> Listen, what shall the two of us be at the next fancy dress party? Oh, you frivolous little thing. So you're thinking about the next one already? The two of us, I tell you. You must go as fortune's child. Yes. <laughs> Can you think of a costume to depict that? Let your wife go, as she always is. Very well put. What about you? What would you go as yourself? Oh, my dear friend, I'm, I'm quite certain about that. Well? At the next fancy dress party, I shall be invisible. Funny idea. Well, there's such a thing as the invisible hat. It's a big black hat, and once it's on you... No one can see him. Yes, you're right. But I'm quite forgetting what I came for. Helmer, give me a cigar. One of the dark Havanas. A great pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Sleep well, Dr. Rank. Thank you for that wish. Wish me the same. You? If you want me to. Sleep well. And thanks for the light. Goodbye, dear friend. Had too much to drink. Perhaps. What are you doing out there, Torvald? To him to the letterbox. It's full. 
Are you going to work tonight? You know very well I'm not. Someone's been at the lock. The lock? There's a broken hairpin. Must be the children, then. Well, you must stop them doing that. Yes. The letter. Oh, no, Torvald. No. Two visiting cards from Rank. From Dr. Rank? Is there anything on them? A black cross over the name. Yes. What? Has he said anything to you? Yes. He said that, um... He said that when these cards come, he's saying goodbye to us. He's going to shut himself away to die. Poor friend. I knew, of course. So soon to hide himself away like a wounded animal. Well, if it has to happen, it's best it happens without words, isn't it, Dorval? I can't imagine not having him here. Well, perhaps it's for the best. For him, anyway. And possibly for us, too. Now we're totally dependent on each other. Beloved wife. Sometimes I feel I can't hold you tight enough. Nora, I often wish that you might be threatened by some imminent danger and then I could risk my life and everything, absolutely everything, for your sake. You must read your letters now, Torvald. No, no, not tonight. Tonight I want to be with you, my darling wife. With the thought of your friend dying? Yes, you're right. The thoughts of death and decay have come between us. It is ugly. We'll keep apart. Good night. Good night, my little songbird. Sleep well, Nora. I'll just go and read through these letters. what you have done. Answer me. Do you understand? Yes. I'm beginning to understand, yes. For a whole eight years, <clears throat> the woman who was my pride and joy, a hypocrite, a liar, worse still, worse still, a criminal. Yes! Shame on you! I should have known something like this would happen. All your father's slack principles. Be quiet! You've inherited all your father's slack principles. No religion, 
No morality. No sense of duty. Oh, and how I've been punished for turning a blind eye to his faults. I did it for your sake. And this is how you pay me back? Yes. This is how? Now you've completely destroyed my happiness. You have ruined my whole future for me. I'm at the mercy of a totally unscrupulous human being. He can do as he likes with me, demand absolutely anything from me. I daren't refuse. I have to sink to such depths and be ruined, all for the sake of an irresponsible woman. Well, when I'm out of this world, you'll oh, be free. Don't be so dramatic. Just like your father always running with those phrases. What good would it do me when you're out of this world, as you put it? It wouldn't do me the slightest good. He can still make all this public. And if he does, I may be suspected of knowing about this crime of yours. People will think that I was behind it, that I put you up to it. It's you I have to thank for all this. After pampering you all through our marriage. Now, do you understand what you've done? Yes. It's so unbelievable, I can't grasp it. Take that shawl off. Take it off, I tell you! I must find some way of satisfying him. The whole thing must be hushed up at all costs. As for you and me, everything must look the same as it was before. But only in the eyes of the world, of course. So you'll go on living in this house, that goes without saying. But you'll not be allowed to bring up the children. I daren't entrust them to you. I think I'm having to say this to the woman that I've loved so dearly. The woman I still. It's all over. It has to be. From now on, it's not a matter of happiness. It's a matter of saving what's left. The fragments saving our skin. Oh, it couldn't be. It couldn't be. Oh, it couldn't be. Nora, hide! Nora! Ow, say you're ill! There's a letter just arrived from Mrs. Helmer. Give it to me. It's from him. But you can't have it. I want it. I want to read it. Read it? I hardly have the courage to do that. Read it again. Yes! Nora! Nora! Nora, it's true! I'm saved, Nora! I'm saved! What about me? Yes, you two, of course. We're both saved, the two of us. Look, he sent you your IOU back. He writes that he regrets and he's sorry. His life has taken a turn for the better. What does it matter what he writes? We're saved, Nora. Nobody can do anything to you now. Oh, Nora. Oh, Nora. No, let's get this sordid business out of the way first. Let me see. I don't want to read it again. I want the whole thing to be like a bad dream. Three terrible days, Nora. I fought a hard fight these last three days. You must have been in agony with no way out except... Oh, no, we don't want to think about such 
horrible things. Let's just rejoice and keep saying, it's over, it's over, it's over! Listen to me, Nora. You don't seem to grasp it. It's over! Why are you looking like that? Oh, see what it is, my poor little Nora. You can't bring yourself to believe that I've forgiven you. But I have, I swear, Nora. I have forgiven you, I have forgiven you everything. I know what you did, you did because you love me. That's true. Yes, you love me as a wife should love her husband. You just misjudged the way of doing it. Didn't have any insight. Well, you can rely on me. I will guide you and I will advise you. I wouldn't be a man if precisely this feminine helplessness didn't make you twice as attractive to me. I swear, I've forgiven you. I've forgiven you everything. Thank you for your forgiveness. What are you doing? Where are you going? I'm taking off this fancy dress. Yes, do. My poor frightened little songbird. Rest safely now and nestle under my wings. There's shelter for you here. I'll keep you here like a dove that I've rescued from the talons of a hawk. I'll calm your poor beating heart, Nora, I will. Believe me. Soon everything will just be the same as it was before. There'll be no need for me to keep saying that I've forgiven you. You'll just feel that I have. For a man, there's something so indescribably sweet and satisfying in knowing that he's forgiven his wife. completely forgiven her with all his heart. In a way, it makes her doubly his property. It's as if he's brought her into the world afresh. In a sense, she is both his wife and, at the same time, his child. Don't be afraid of anything, Nora. Be open with me. And I'll be both your will and your conscience. What? Aren't you going to bed? You've changed. Yes, Torvald. I've changed. But why now, so late? I'm not going to sleep tonight. Laura, dear. It's not so very late. Come and sit down. You and I have a lot to talk about. What is it? Why are you looking? Sit like? down here, Torvald. This will take some time. I have a lot to talk to you about. Frighten me, Nora. I don't understand you. That's just it. You don't understand me, and I have never understood you either. Not until tonight. No, you mustn't interrupt me. You must just listen to what I say. We're going to settle things now, Torvald. What do you mean by that? Doesn't anything strike you? Sitting here like this. What? We've been married for eight years now. Hasn't it struck you? This is the first time that you and I, husband and wife, have talked seriously to each other. What do you mean, seriously? Well, for eight whole years, no, longer, actually, ever since we first met, we have never exchanged a serious word on any serious subject. You mean that I should have been telling you about my worries all the time? I mean, you wouldn't have been able to no, help me with them no, anyway. No, 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 I'm not talking about worries. What I'm saying is that we have never sat down seriously together to try to get to the bottom of something. <laughs> Would you have been interested in doing that, Nora? That's exactly the point. You've never understood me. I have been greatly wronged, Torvald. First by Papa, and then by you. Why, the two of us, the two people who've loved you more than anybody? You've never loved me. You just thought that it was fun to be in love with me. Oh, what a way to talk. Well, it's true, Torvald. 
When I left at home with Papa, he used to tell me what he thought about everything, and so I thought the same. Or if I didn't, I used to hide it, because he wouldn't have liked it. He called me his doll child, and he used to play with me the way I played with my dolls. And then I came to live in your house. What a way to talk about our marriage. What I mean is, is that I passed from Papa's hands and into yours. You arranged everything according to your taste, and so it became my taste too. Or I pretended it did. I don't really know which. Well, both, I think. First one, and then the other. Looking at it now, I think I have lived here like a pauper. From hand to mouth. I've lived by performing tricks for you, Torval, because that's the way you wanted it. You and Papa have done me a great wrong. It's because of both of you that I've made nothing of my life. Unreasonable and ungrateful can you be? I mean, haven't you been happy here? No. I've never been that. I thought I was. But, not but I never really have been. Not, not happy? No. Just cheerful. And you've always been so kind to me, Torvald. But our home has never been more than a doll's house. I've been your doll wife here, just as I was Papa's doll child at home. And the children have been my dolls in their turn. I thought it was fun when you played with me, just as they thought it was fun when I played with them. That's been our marriage, Torvald. There's something in what you say, however exaggerated and hysterical it might be, but things are going to be different from now on. I mean, playtime is over. Now is the time to be brought up. For who to be brought up? For me or the children? Both. You and the children, my oh, darling Nora. No, no, Torvald, you're not the man to bring me up to be the right wife for you. How can you say that? And as for me, how am I capable of bringing up the children? Oh, Nora. Well, didn't you say yourself just now that you didn't trust me to do that? Yes, in a moment of rage, but you mustn't pay any attention no, to that. No, but you were perfectly right to say that. I'm not capable of it. Something else has to happen first. I have to bring myself up. And you're not the man to do that for me. I have to do that on my own. That's why I'm leaving you now. What did you say? I have to be on my own if I am to get to understand myself and everything outside. That's why I can't stay here any longer. Nora, Nora. I'm leaving straight away. I'm sure Christina will put me up for the night. Oh, this is madness. You're, 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 you're out of your mind. I won't let you. I forbid it. It's no use you forbidding me anything anymore. I'll take what belongs to me. I don't want anything of yours, either now or later. This is madness. Tomorrow I'll go home, to my old hometown, I mean. It should be easier for me to find something to do there. Oh, you more blind, inexperienced creature. I must see that I get some experience, Torvald. But you're leaving your home, your husband, and your children. I mean, haven't you thought what people will say? I can't think about that. I only know that it's necessary for me. This is outrageous. You're betraying your most sacred duty. What do you consider my most sacred duty to be? Do I have to tell you? It's your duty to your husband and your children. I have another duty, just as sacred. You have not. But what could that be? My duty to myself. First and foremost, you are a wife and mother. Oh, I don't believe that any longer. I believe that first and foremost, I am a human being, just as you are, or at least that I must try to become one. Oh, I know that most people would say that you're right, Torvald, and that it says something like that in all the books, but I can't go on accepting what people say and what it says in books. I have to think things out for myself so that I'll get to understand them. But don't you understand that your place it's in the home. I mean, don't you have something you can rely on for guidance in these matters? Religion. Torvald, I don't really know at all what religion is. What are you saying? Well, I don't know anything except what Pastor Hansen told me when I was being confirmed. He said that religion was this and that and the other. When I get away from all this and on my own, I'm going to have to look into that as well. I must find out whether it was right what Pastor Hansen said or rather whether it was right for me. If you, if you haven't got your religion to guide you, then, then let me stir your, your conscience. I mean, you must have some moral sense, haven't you? Or perhaps you haven't. Answer me that. Well, it isn't very easy to answer you that, Torvald, because I just don't know. I really don't know what I think about all that. 
All I do know is that you and I think quite differently about things like that. And now I'm told that the law is quite different from what I thought, but I simply can't get it into my head that the law can be right, that a woman doesn't have the right to spare her old and dying father or to save her husband's life. I simply don't believe that. Oh, you think and talk like a child. You don't understand the society you live in. No. No, I don't. But now I'm going to find out about it. I must find out who's right. Society or me? You're ill. Nora, you're feverish. You're out of your mind. I've never felt so clear, so certain, as I do tonight. And you're leaving your husband and your children when you feel so clear and so certain. Yes, I am. There's only one possible explanation. What's that? You don't love me anymore. No. That's just it. Can you say that? Well, it, it, it hurts me to say it very much, Torvald, because you've always been so kind to me, but I can't help it. I don't love you anymore. And you're clear and certain about that, too? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That's why I can't stay here any longer. Can you tell me what I've done to forfeit your love? Yes, I can. It was tonight when the most wonderful thing of all didn't happen. Because then I saw that you're not the man that I thought you were. Please explain. I don't understand you. Well, you see, for eight years now, I've been waiting so patiently, because for heaven's sake, I know that the most wonderful thing of all doesn't happen just any old day. And then this shattering thing happened to me, and I was absolutely certain. Now, the most wonderful thing of all is going to happen. You see, all the time that Krogstad's letter was lying out there, it never occurred to me that you would give way to that man's conditions. I was, I thought with absolute certainty that you would say to him, let the whole world know about it. And when that had happened... Yes, after I'd abandoned my wife to shame and disgrace. When that had happened, I thought with absolute certainty that you would step forward and you would take it all upon yourself and say, I am the guilty one. Laura. What do you mean? That I should never have been willing to accept such a sacrifice on your part? No, of course not. That goes without saying. But how much would my word have counted against yours? That was the most wonderful thing that I was hoping for and dreading. And it was to prevent that that I was willing to end my life. Nora, I would gladly work night and day for you. I would endure sorrow and deprivation for your sake. But no man will sacrifice his honor for the one he loves. But hundreds and thousands of women have. You think and talk like a foolish child. All right. But you neither think nor talk like the man I can share my life with. Once your fear had passed, not of what was threatening me, but of what you were being exposed to. And once the danger was over, then as far as you were concerned, it was, it was, it was as if nothing at all had happened. I was your little skylark, just the same as before. Your doll, who you were going to protect twice as carefully as you had before, because it was so weak and fragile, Torvald. Torvald. 
In that moment, oh. I realized that for eight years now, I have been living here with a stranger, and I've had three children. Oh, God, I can't bear to think about it. I could tear myself into little pieces. The whole abyss seems to have opened up between us. But Nora, isn't it possible to close it? As I am now, I am no wife for you. I have the strength to change. Perhaps. If your doll is taken away from you. I didn't part it from you, Nora. I can't even grasp the thought of it. All the more need for me to go. No. No, Nora. Wait till tomorrow. I can't spend the night in a strange man's house. Can't we live here as brother and sister? Oh, you know perfectly well that that wouldn't last. Goodbye, Torvald. I won't go and look at the children because I know they're in better hands than mine. I can't be anything to them as I am now. But someday, Nora, someday. Who knows? How can I know? I have no idea what I shall turn out to be. But you're my wife, both as you are now, and whatever you have become. Listen, Torvald. I've heard that when a wife leaves her husband's house, as I'm doing now, that he is released by law from all his obligations towards her. Well, anyway, I release you from all your obligations. You mustn't feel bound in any way, any more than I shall. There must be complete freedom on both sides. Here's your ring. Give me more. Oh, no, this is well. This is well. <laughs> so now it's all over. Putting the keys down here. As for the household, well, the maids know about running everything better than I do. Tomorrow, after I've left her, Christina will come and pack the belongings that I bought with me from home, and I'll have them sent on. It's all over. Do you ever think of me again? I'm sure I shall often think of you. And this house. They're no right to you, Nora. No, never. I won't allow you to do that. But I must send you. No, nothing. Nothing. Oh, I'll help you should you need it. I don't accept help from strangers. Nora. Can't I ever be anything more than a stranger to you? that, the most wonderful thing of all would have to happen. Well, well, tell me what it is, this most wonderful thing of all. You and I would have to change so much that no, no, I don't believe anything wonderful, not anymore. Tell me, I, I want to believe it. Change so much that... Change so much that our life together could become a marriage.
she's gone. The most wonderful thing of all. Em uma cidade onde as pessoas usavam roupas demais, havia um problema com o qual não se preocupavam jamais. Nesse lugar morava uma menininha e quanta curiosidade ela tinha. Isso a fez descobrir um enorme segredo que, de repente, mudaria a vida.